The gold medal salesperson died unexpectedly and traveled back to ancient times, becoming the legitimate daughter of the Prime Minister, Feng Jiaojiao. The Prime Minister and his wife are very affectionate, having given birth to six sons for many years but never having a daughter. Finally hoping for a daughter, but due to an accident, she drifted into a rural family. Feng Jiaojiao just crossed over and faced this scene. Not only did she dress up as a three-year-old nanny, but she almost got killed. She manipulated the goo insect to bring her own father and brother to preside over justice, becoming the apple of the wind family's eye. Her six brothers took turns doting on her, and even her ancestors treated her as their favorite. I thought Miss Beijing would exclude this wandering nanny, but I didn't want her to thrive in the Beijing area and be crowned as the Princess of Xiang, with endless scenery. Suddenly one day, a seven elder brother came to his home, who was as gentle and quiet as a banished fairy, and his original life of salted fish was completely broken. The ups and downs of the court and the bloodless battles seemed to be related to this gentle and harmless young man. The young man's drooping eyes, the moment he smiles, never a moment is truly soft. He rarely stepped out of his small courtyard in Qingli, and rarely had any relationship with anyone, until one day she broke into his world and his heart finally came alive like withered wood. He will punish all those who offend her with extreme punishment, and his usually gentle eyes finally reveal the original solemnity. It turns out that the gentle jade may not necessarily be a banished fairy, but it could also be a black lotus flower dressed in the skin of a banished fairy. 1v1, group pet, sweet text, Xuanwen, Xuanjie. Human Awakening Little Green Tea versus Heartless and Spicy Black Lotus Keywords of the Novel After being favored by the big shots, she earned money and flipped through pop-ups. After being favored by the big shots, she earned money and flipped through the entire TXT collection download. After being favored by the big shots, she earned money and flipped through the latest chapters to read. Chapter 1 Dressing Up as a Little Poor you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1 Dressing Up as a Little Poor The Imperial City of Daliang, Yuan Shao, filled round balls made of glutinous rice. Flower for Lantern Festival, is decorated with lanterns. The flower market lights are like the day, the fire trees and silver flowers are in harmony, the six street lights are noisy for children, and Yuan Shao, filled round balls made of glutinous rice. Flower for Lantern Festival, is sold in the wind. It was a bustling and extraordinary scene, but it highlighted the bleakness of the small courtyard behind the government office in the Western Market. A big-bellied man with a scar on his face cursed, you little brat with cheap skin and meat. If you run away, leave me a mop for you to eat and drink, and I dare not get sick. If it affects the price in the future, I will see if I don't kill you. As he spoke, the whip in his hand hit the little girl one after another completely disregarding the fact that it was a whip for driving donkeys. Even thirty whips from an adult would kill him, let alone a little child. That girl is only a little one, about three years old. She curled up with her head in both hands and lay there without a sound. The woman standing on the side seemed a bit scared. She tugged at the man's arm and said, Brother Dao, this girl won't die, will she? Tu Badeo stopped his whip, his eyes indifferent, and he spat in the direction of the little girl, saying, wake her up with water. When she wakes up, sell her to the kiln. If she doesn't wake up, send her to the morgue. Sell her for the price of a ghost wedding. How do they clean up? He originally wanted to wait for the little girl to turn five years old before selling it for a good price, but seeing her more picky face, he increasingly felt that this girl might not be his seed. Maybe it's the green hat that the slut gave him. That little slut was originally picked up by him on the street. When he found her, her clothes were in disarray, and she might have been played with by someone. In addition, the woman had just run away a few days ago, and the little girl lost her mother. She had a fever after only staying in the donkey shed for one night, and Tu Badeo was extremely angry. Her intuition was that she had to pay for it. He turned around and returned to his dilapidated home. As soon as the door closed, he let the little people outside lie motionless in the wind and snow. 
Zhao Guilan also looked at the doll in the snow pit with some disgust. She lifted her foot and kicked her, shouting, Hey, wake up, don't pretend to be dead to me. You are just like your mother, you are all cheap skin and meat. Even if your damn mother runs away, she doesn't know how to take you away. This actually affected her and her life with Brother Dao. The little girl remained motionless, resembling a clay sculpture. Zhao Guilan sneered lightly and looked for cold water disdainfully. The little girl finally moved and slowly opened her eyes, with a hint of confusion and a gaze that didn't belong to her age group. Is this what the King of Hell said about compensation? Feng Jiaojiao slowly sat up with her body propped up, her body stiffened from the cold, yet it was burning with pain. She raised her hand and looked at her small palm, feeling a little confused, but her mind began to gradually recall what the King of Hell had said to her in the underworld. The only daughter of the wife of Feng, the first favored minister of the Daliang kingdom, who was exiled and had a weak life, died early. Suddenly, something crawled out between her sleeve, the size of a grain of rice, like a black bean, with eight-legged eyes that were very inconspicuous. This is... Gu Bu. Feng Jiaojiao's eyes flickered slightly as Zhao Guilan returned carrying a bucket of water. She saw that Feng Jiaojiao was clearly taken aback when she woke up, and immediately cursed, Damn it, since you wake up, get up and come with me. Maybe you can even sell it for a good price. She splashed all the ice water in her hand with a loud splash towards Feng Jiaojiao. The frozen doll had no resistance and was thoroughly doused by her hood. The wind trembled with excitement and agility. My mind became clearer and clearer as Yen Wangye told her in the underworld. Her eyes lit up, and her pale lips seemed to move. In the next second, the black dots in her hand flew towards the woman in an instant. Zhao Guilan let out a scream, her voice sharp and mournful, and the black dots seeped into her eyes, leaving bleeding marks. She sat down on the ground. Two Badeo in the room heard a noise and realized it was not right. He immediately rushed out and watched Zhao Guilan roll on the ground. He turned to Feng Jiaojiao and said, Little beast, what did you do? Do you dare to hurt your mother? Feng Jiaojiao couldn't stand up, and her cold gaze didn't look like a young baby at all. She said cruelly, What kind of mother is she to me? It's just that you've turned the tide in a bad way. If you don't want to die, just leave. Zhao Guilan was rolling and howling there, and Tu Badeo didn't expect Feng Jiaojiao, a little child, to say such a thing. At the same time, she was shocked and instantly angered. He picked up the whip from the ground again, and Feng Jiaojiao's lips twitched, muttering something. Zhao Guilan was instantly electrocuted, her eyes rolled over, and like a dead person, Tu Badeo was also startled. Feng Jiaojiao used all her strength and grabbed a snowball of blood from her body, smashing it onto the body of Tu Badeo. Tu Badeo immediately began to curse. He raised his hand, and the whip was about to be swung down. But the next second, the black particle quickly flew out of Zhao Guilan's corner of the eye and directly flew into Tu Badeo's eyes. Tu Badeo seemed to be struck by lightning in an instant, and the whip in his hand fell to the ground. Immediately, like Zhao Guilan, he covered his eyes and rolled around, howling. Feng Jiaojiao couldn't say whether she was frozen or in pain and couldn't speak. She trembled for a while before struggling to squeeze out a few words from her teeth. Quickly make him unconscious, then go find Prime Minister Feng and ask him to come and save me. As soon as she finished speaking, she plunged into the snow and the black spot flew into the air. Before fainting, she even cursed the king of hell, saying, What is the upper destiny? That's it. It's better to just kill her. Someone in the underworld suddenly sneezed. On the other side, inside the palace city, the ministers and eunuchs were in a hurry, feeling as if they were grieving. The atmosphere in Zhong Chui's palace was heavy, with a man in a yellow robe sitting by the bed, and two stunning women lying on the bed, both of whom had lost their breath at this moment. The man in a yellow robe held on to the pale blue clothes by the bedside, 
and the woman in a yellow robe sobbed, not looking at the woman leaning inside. A child knelt by the bed, and more than ten trusted ministers knelt on the ground. Prime Minister Fong Zilin knelt first, followed by his six sons, and then the Xiao family and other ministers. In the court, most of the high dot ranking officials were controlled by the Fong family, because the Fong family followed Emperor Liang to conquer the world and belonged to the founding officials. And his six children each had their own talents, and were highly valued by Emperor Da Liang. Even the Xiao family of the Empress Dowager of the Liang dynasty has never been so honored and favored. The Empress once fought the world together with Emperor Da Liang, and can be said to be a female hero who never let her down. The Emperor and Empress were like glue for more than ten years, but unexpectedly, they ended up looking at each other with mutual disgust. After the Empress gave birth to a crown prince and princess, Emperor Da Liang was attracted by the beauty of Luo Nu and bestowed upon her a noble consort, giving birth to a son. These days, Emperor Da Liang has been planning to establish an empress and crown prince, but unexpectedly, the empress and noble consort died mysteriously today, both drinking poison and committing suicide. Even the crown prince and princess are nowhere to be found. Fong Feian, the imperial historian, said. Your Majesty, the empress and concubines are suddenly dead. You should tour the crown prince and the royal highness princess immediately to avoid further trouble and national unrest. Prime Minister Feng's eldest son, Jing Jingyu, also said, Your Majesty, I have seconded the proposal. Now that peace has been established, it is not easy to shake the foundation of the country. Please immediately visit the crown prince princess to avoid causing the vassal state to feel uneasy again. New book release, asking for tickets, collecting, tipping, various requests Yuan Yuan will carefully read every comment and welcome babies to speak up. Additionally, the comments section occasionally drops Easter eggs, welcome babies to come and pick them up, end of this chapter. Chapter 2 The Wind Clan's How How Soup Comes to Receive You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio Chapter 2 the Wind Clan's How How Soup comes to receive Emperor Daliang sat by the edge of the bed, looking at the lifeless Luanu without saying a word. The ministers followed the advice of the two sons of the Fong family. All kowtowed to the ground. I second your opinion, please find the prince and royal highness princess. Only the child kneeling by the bed, silent, looked at the body of his mother's consort with crimson eyes. Emperor Daliang fell silent in sadness, and the Prime Minister Fong finally spoke up. He said, Your Majesty, it's strange that the Empress and the Empress committed suicide together. If the Crown Prince goes missing, the Daliang dynasty may be in turmoil. Please make a decision as soon as possible. He has a handsome appearance and an extraordinary demeanor, even though he is in middle age, he has early white hair. Three years ago, his wife got lost in an assassination attempt, and the Fong family mobilized all their forces to search for her, but there was no news. The Empress is a close friend of his wife's boudoir, and now she's committing suicide, I'm afraid she'll be even sadder if she finds out. Upon hearing the voice of Prime Minister Fong, Emperor Daliang finally had a reaction. He seemed to have aged a lot in an instant, with a pair of bright red eyes staring deeply at Luo Nu on the bed. His voice was hoarse and he said, The Empress and Noble Consort are secretly not mourning, and the Crown Prince and Princess will not return from the palace. Therefore, they have appointed Bei Heng as the Crown Prince. Please all step down, I want to stay with Luo Er for a while longer. Although they had long anticipated Emperor Liang's plan to become a Crown Prince, they did not expect it to be so hasty. I would rather conceal the news of the death of the Empress than establish a crown prince. And knowing that the Empress and Emperor Daliang went through life and death, and only managed to pacify the world after overcoming obstacles, they did not want to end this way. How can one imagine the evening scenery of these loyal ministers? Feng Shanyu had known the crown prince since childhood, grew up in school, and was a close friend as well as a ruler and subject. Hearing these words, he couldn't calm down naturally. His voice was somewhat urgent. Your Majesty, 
Your Highness the Crown Prince is the foundation of the country, how can we easily waver? Moreover, the Crown Prince is not wrong, and cannot be easily shaken. Emperor Daliang impatiently waved his hand and coldly interrupted him, saying, I have made up my mind. He then brushed his sleeves and gestured for the courtiers to step down. Feng Shanyu seemed to have something to say, but was pressed down by his father. Feng Shanyu looked at his father incredulously, and his eyes fixed on him. However, Prime Minister Feng remained silent, only holding Feng Shanyu's hand and leading his courtiers to bow and leave. Silent all the way, with no one in the palace corridor. Prime Minister Feng's pace was fast, and his eyes seemed to carry a long lost vibration, as if he was eager to do something. The sixth son of the Feng family anxiously followed behind, and Feng Shanyu couldn't help but run to Prime Minister Feng and ask, Father, not to mention that the Crown Prince and son are sincere friends, but to mention the friendship between the mother and the Empress, the Crown Prince's intelligence and character, how can father easily give up his highness? Prime Minister Feng's sharp eyes suddenly froze. He stopped, glanced at his six sons, and slowly raised his right hand. Only then did everyone realize that there were two rice grain sized insects on the back of Prime Minister Feng's right hand. The eldest son scenic area also lost control. This is my mother's insect. Prime Minister Feng nodded and said, Not bad. This was just when Emperor Liang issued an order, he discovered it. Although he was eager to save his wife, he did not completely disregard the lives of the crown prince and princess. After all, that was the young man he looked at as he grew up. In his eyes, he was no different from half of his son. He said to Feng Shanyu, you go back to the mansion and block the Feng family. You can see the people you want to see at home, and you must not leak any information. The rest of you come with me to pick up your mother. Yes. After following their father out of the palace, the five sons of the Feng family galloped on horseback. Two Gu insects flew in the air, guiding them in their direction. Feng Shanyu was almost so excited that his footsteps became chaotic that he almost stumbled and rode back home. Following his father's instructions, the Feng family was banned. The news of Prime Minister Feng and his five sons galloping on horseback in the capital spread throughout the entire imperial city of Daliang. The mansion official sat up in a deep sleep and walked out without even putting on his shoes. The result was that the Prime Minister and his team bypassed the government office and ran towards the back of it. The goo insect stopped, it flew into the narrow courtyard, and the eyes of Prime Minister Feng and others immediately turned red. Their mother is in this small courtyard, and they can't even imagine what kind of life she has been living for the past three years. Prime Minister Feng pushed open the wooden door and entered, as if pushing a stone door. Seeing the situation inside, the few people took a deep breath. I saw two adults lying on the ground with their faces covered in blood. The insects landed on a small snowdrift, and without careful observation, there was no one inside. A few people rushed over directly, trembling as they dug out a child from inside. Prime Minister Feng burst into tears, and the brothers of the Feng family couldn't help but tremble with anger. This child doesn't need to say much, just by looking at it, you can tell it's a baby born to your mother. In addition, the Gu insect only protects the mother and her family, which further confirms the identity of this girl. It goes without saying what my mother has experienced here. The brothers wiped their faces and suddenly went crazy. The scenery and wind were not cold, and they beat the two lying on the ground. Feng Zichen and the other three searched through the cramped courtyard. Although they also knew that Gu Chong had already expressed through his actions that there was only their sister here, he still didn't give up. Prime Minister Feng held on to Feng Jiao Jiao and couldn't help but tremble. He tucked her into his cloak, his eyes turning red, and roared, prepare a sedan chair and pass on the imperial physician. Hurry up and save my daughter. The usually calm and self-disciplined Prime Minister Feng lost his sanity for the first time. The child in his arms was too thin and light, and his breathing was extremely weak. He held her in his arms like a lump of ice, afraid that she would lose her life in the next second. 
the officials who had just chased after him quickly responded and hurriedly prepared for the carriage to drive away. The brothers searched without success and surrounded the prime minister with red eyes, blocking the snow and wind with their own dolls in his arms. Feng Jiaojiao only felt like she was falling into the warm pool, and she struggled to open her eyes. Due to being frozen for too long, she was completely numb. Her eyelashes were covered in frost, and her lips were frozen blue. As soon as she opened her eyes, she saw six big men surrounded her with bright red eyes. Feng Jiaojiao was like a doll that would shatter at a touch. Her voice was weak and she said, Are you here to save Jiaojiao? Her eyes sparkled and her voice was almost imperceptible, but it made several big men burst into tears. Prime Minister Feng replied with a red eye, Yes, Daddy has come to save you. If Jiao Jiao persists, Daddy will take you home. Although he knew that Jiao Jiao was the daughter of Wanner and others, it didn't matter. The presence of the Gu insect indicates that Wanner has not died. She is both Wanner's daughter and his daughter, as for that person he glanced at two Badeo lying on the ground without leaving a trace. He is not worthy to be the father of Wanner's child. The sedan chair drove over, and Prime Minister Fong carefully led her onto the sedan chair like holding a fragile treasure. The fifth son of the Fong family tied two Badeo and Zhao Guilan together, tied them to the ponytail, and dragged them back. At that moment, there were rumors in the imperial city that Prime Minister Fong had a daughter who was exiled to a butcher's house and was taken back by the Fong family with great fanfare. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Does Wanna Have More Than One Daughter? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Does Wanna Have More Than One Daughter? At this time, the Zheng family also received information. When they arrived at the Feng family, Feng Jiaojiao was being treated by the imperial physician in the Baoyue pavilion. That is the boudoir that the prime minister and the prime minister's wife have prepared for a long time. As they have been wanting a daughter for many years, they have been equally prepared about their daughter. I'm afraid that even if I have a daughter, my own daughter will have what needs to be lacking. The two of them had been preparing for this for over a decade, but they didn't expect their son to have several children and their daughter to never come. Nowadays, it is in this situation that wishes come true. Prime Minister Fong sincerely felt sorry for this daughter, and everyone was pacing around outside the boudoir with their hearts in turmoil. Father, the imperial physician said that Jiao Jiao has been frostbitten all over her body, and she will definitely fall ill in the future. Why don't we invite the high priest to treat her? The sight of her sister's injury made Jin Yu's hands tremble with anger, wishing she could cut off those two things that had eaten dog bile. Feng Shang also said, Yes, father. Now that the imperial physician is inside and doesn't know the situation, it's safer to invite the high priest first. The high priest, who was under the tutelage of a medical immortal, was rumored to have the ability to resurrect from the dead. Prime Minister Fong was also anxious and remembered his honored guests at home. He quickly nodded and said, Okay. He then said to the scenic area, Please go and invite me personally. Remember to only let the high priest come, go and return quickly. Yes. The old man from the Zheng family was standing by, tears streaming down his face. A man who looked slightly younger than the prime minister also frowned anxiously. Prime Minister Fong stepped forward to offer a cup of tea and comforted, Mother-in-law, please rest assured. Jiao Jiao will definitely be fine. The Gu insect is still there, indicating that Wanner is still alive. My son Da in dot law will definitely cure Jiao Jiao and retrieve Wanner. The old lady of the Zheng family seemed to have something to say, but she was hesitant. She opened her mouth and stopped, only sighing and nodding, still shedding tears. The man beside him said, I don't know how my brother dot in dot law should treat Jiao Jiao. If my brother dot in dot law doesn't, why not send Jiao Jiao to the Jing family and become my Jing family daughter? He and his sister have always had a good relationship. Now that his sister can't find her, leaving only a severely ill and frail niece, he can't ignore it or not worry. This is also what Mrs. Zheng is worried about. 
Although her daughter was assassinated by a thief and still has a daughter, it doesn't sound good to say anything about Wanner or Jiao Jiao. Upon hearing these words, Prime Minister Feng immediately bowed and knelt down, saying, Jiao Jiao is the only daughter of my son. In law. I will take good care of her. Over the years, my son. In law has lost Wanner and a pair of children. I will make extra compensation and fulfill my responsibilities as a father. Please rest assured, mother. In law. The five sons behind them all knelt down together, bowing to the old woman and saying, My younger brothers and sisters work hard outside, so my grandchildren should take good care of them. This statement immediately confirmed Jiao Jiao's identity, and the old woman was moved beyond control. Even Zheng Kong sincerely admired her brother. In law. The old woman and Zheng Kong quickly helped up a few people. The old woman tearfully said, Good child, thank you for your hard work. However, what do you mean by a pair of children? Does Wana have more than just one daughter? Feng Cheng made a gesture of invitation to the old woman and helped her to the neighboring Qingli courtyard. He pushed open the door and saw the local doctor drugging a young man in a yellow robe. Standing next to him was his third son, Feng Shanyu. The young man heard the sound and turned his eyes slightly. In the moment he could see her face clearly, the old woman fell to her knees with a thud, her voice trembling, and tears falling. Your Highness. When Tu Badeo and his companions woke up, they were in the firewood shed of the Prime Minister's mansion. Inside, there were cobwebs, dust and debris piled up, and it was obvious that they had not been cleaned for many years, creating a desolate and destitute scene. But even so, it is still much better than his family. Tu Badeo stood up with his head in a daze. He only felt pain all over his body. When he touched his face, blood covered his hands and reflected in his eyes. His face was in excruciating pain, and he finally regained consciousness. He looked at Zhao Guilan lying on the side and kicked her, saying, Wake up, we've been caught. With this movement, the iron chain around his neck tightened and he pulled her back. He just realized that his neck was tied to the low dot bearing column with a dog chain, and there was also one around Zhao Guilan's neck. Zhao Guilan woke up leisurely, and her injuries were not much better. As soon as she woke up, she rolled her eyes in pain and moaned in various ways. Tu Badeo kicked her over and said, Damn you, what's your name? What's wrong with us being caught? Zhao Guilan finally came to her senses. Her reaction was greater than that of Tu Badeo. She screamed loudly, and Tu Badeo wished he could kick her and block her mouth. The servant outside heard a voice inside and said, Go and report to the Prime Minister, they are awake. Then the door was pushed open and several sturdy servants came in, two of whom were holding ice water and pouring it down from their pockets. Tu Badeo had also worked in the government office for a period of time before, and coupled with the strong power of the Fong family, he naturally recognized the attire of the servants of the Fong family. He shivered with excitement and knelt down trembling, begging for mercy. Please spare my life, I don't know what I did wrong and angered you. Please spare my life. Zhao Guilan also knelt down and begged for mercy. Yes, sir, please spare your life. This cold weather is really unbearable for me. A cold voice rang out at the door. You can't bear it, can our legitimate young lady bear it? The entry. Level was an extremely sturdy man, with a face full of flesh and a whip in his hand, full of murderous energy, which was not easy to provoke at first glance. He ordered the servants, drag them into the yard, as the prime minister said, give them pine bark. At first glance, Tubadeo seemed to be almost fainting. He didn't know anyone. He was the famous head of the death row, Hu Xiong. It was said that he was a person personally cultivated by the crown prince, with extremely brutal methods. Those who fell into his hands could not come back whole. When he heard that they had bullied the legitimate young lady of the prime minister's mansion, the face of the little girl who had been teased by him suddenly appeared. He hugged the pillar behind him and walked away without being dragged by the servants, saying, that dead girl is not the miss of the prime minister's mansion, 
she is that bastard's wild seed. At this point, his voice suddenly stopped, as if he had figured something out. No wonder that girl didn't look like him, no wonder he found that woman in tattered clothes but not cheap. Is Shi Zheng Wanner, the missing wife of Prime Minister Fong? Thinking of this, Tu Badeo's hands and feet suddenly became cold, while Zhao Guilan beside him was scared to pee. They should know that the Prime Minister's wife had already confessed them. How dare they let the Prime Minister's wife do this or that? They almost sold the Prime Minister's daughter into a kiln. The key Prime Minister's wife didn't mention it either. Besides, they are just helping the Prime Minister teach the children a lesson. They have been helping raise the children for so long without any credit or hard work. The Prime Minister shouldn't be so unreasonable, right? Bang! A whip came fiercely, with a thorn on the whip, directly beating the two of them to pieces. Hu Xiong angrily said. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 The Extra Little Brother You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 The Extra Little Brother, How Dare You Insult Madam and Miss, Seek Death Someone, strip them naked and throw them into the yard. I'm going to break their bones. When Feng Jiaojiao woke up again, she lay on a large bed, with Persian blue gauze floating above her head, adorned with pearls. The bedding and pillows were all embroidered with high dot quality silk. A circle of people gathered around Feng Jiaojiao, staring at her intently. Jiaojiao, you have finally woken up. Mrs. Zhang's tears, which she struggled to stop, fell again. Standing beside her, Zheng Kong and her several brothers looked at her with concern. Feng Jiaojiao's mind couldn't help but recall the words that Yan Wangye had once told her. She lowered her eyes, pursed her pale lips, and extended her tender little hand as if to wipe her cheeks. She comforted her with a tender voice, Don't cry, Grandma won't cry. Upon hearing this, old master Zheng burst into tears. She is still covered in injuries, yet she still comforts her. Mrs. Zheng directly transformed her longing for her daughter into a love for her granddaughter, and seeing the young girl's sensible appearance made her heart ache even more. She stroked her delicate face and wiped her tears, saying, Grandmother won't cry, Grandmother won't cry anymore. Feng Jiaojiao asked cautiously, Are you Jiaojiao's grandmother? Can you protect Jiaojiao from being beaten? Her mouth clenched, tears streaming down her face, so pitiful. A naive sentence will fill up Tu Ba Dao's hatred value. She tried her best to play the role of a young and delicate child, afraid of being discovered by the people here and causing her to die immediately, and how long she could live depended entirely on how much merit she had accumulated. So she not only has to pretend to be an ignorant child, but also keeps doing good things and prolonging her life. Mrs. Zheng shed tears again, and her trembling voice said, No, from now on, Jiao Jiao will be the apple of our Zheng and Feng family's eyes. No one will bully Jiao Jiao anymore. Grandma protects you, and your uncle protects you. And the brothers are protecting you. Feng Che wished he could live and cut those two sluts. The six brothers were all extremely congested and heartbroken. Zheng Kong couldn't help but wipe the corner of his eye and said to the scenic area, Follow me into the palace now. Please grant the title of Princess Jiao Jiao. Okay. Feng Shanyu stopped and said, now that there has just been an incident in the imperial palace, will seeking a thief bring any trouble to the Feng family? Mrs. Zheng shook her head and said, No way. The Feng family's request for a daughter is something that the entire Liang dynasty knows. Now that there is an accident in the palace, a big event is needed to cover it up. The only daughter of the Feng family and her son's recovery can just cover up the trouble in the palace. The Emperor of Liang couldn't help but beg for it. Speaking of this, Mrs. Zheng's eyes turned cold. Not bad. Prime Minister Feng walked up from outside and said to Zheng Kong and Feng Shanyu, I have already asked the High Priest to report the news of my children's return. You should go immediately. If the High Priest fights in front, you will definitely get a good title. He then approached Feng Jiaojiao and carefully held her small hand, 
pressing it against her face. His voice was hoarse, Jiao Jiao, Daddy will never let you be bullied by anyone again. Okay. Feng Shanyu walked out of the house with Chen Kong. In the following days, Feng Jiao Jiao has been recovering under the careful care of Mrs. Zheng. Six brothers bring her different treasures every day. Sometimes it's agate and glass skewers, carved tortoise shell hairpins, eight precious golden silk and blue pupil bracelets, sometimes it's food for insects and insects from southern Xinjiang, precious fruits from northern Xinjiang, and silk carpets from Persia, all of which are exquisite and luxurious. On the third day, due to the intervention of the high priest, Feng Jiao Jiao's injuries had mostly healed, and she did not see the little brother who was rumored to have returned to the mansion with her. In the original owner's memory, there is no such person at all. The key is still three years older than her, and Feng Jiao Jiao wonders in her heart. Has the king of hell never said that Prime Minister Feng has a seventh son? Who is this extra little brother? Mrs. Zheng left a maid for her to go home after she had mostly recovered from her injuries, and she could also go down to the ground and move freely. Apart from eating, sleeping, and playing with the Persian cat given to her by her fourth brother all day. On the other side of the palace, eunuch de Gongong came with a decree and said to the Prime Minister, Prime Minister, Your Majesty has a decree. I wonder how Miss Fong has recovered. Can you personally accept the decree? Fong Jiao Jiao held the kitten and stood still. Prime Minister Fong took Fong Jiao Jiao's hand and lovingly stroked her spine, leading her to the roots of Dukta. He then said to Dukta, the young child is seriously injured and difficult to get up from bed. Jiao Jiao has recovered almost. Let's read the imperial edict here. The whole family knelt down at the Baoyue pavilion, and Dukta issued a decree saying, heaven will carry the fortune. The emperor's edict reads. Feng Jiao Jiao, the daughter of the Feng family, is intelligent and agile, with a wise heart that is naturally formed, elegant and elegant in appearance, and pure in grace. She is specially honored as the head of all the princesses, enjoying a monthly salary of 400 tails, 30 pieces of brocade, a pair of phoenix feathers and gold steps, a piece of sheep fat jade rui, and a peacock cloak. I bestow upon the seven gentlemen of the wind a hundred tails of gold, thirty pieces of brocade, one handle of jade rui, and one handle of moon cold sword. I am honored with this then came the collective kowtow of everyone. Your Majesty, long live my emperor. Long live. With the help of her elder brother, Feng Jiao Jiao stood up and Prime Minister Feng walked up to Duke Da, handing him many benefits. He said, My son and daughter have just returned, and I have been taking leave for the past few days without going to court. I'm afraid it will anger Tian Yin. Please give me many good words, Duke. Duke de rejected the Prime Minister's flattery and said, If there is anything wrong with the Prime Minister, I will consider myself a Prime Minister's flattery. How can I take what the Prime Minister has? Prime Minister Fong refused to let Duke de evade, so he stuffed the things into Duke de's hands and personally sent him away. Fong Jiao Jiao looked at the furrowed brows of her brothers and couldn't help but ask, Jiao Jiao has been praised. Are the brothers unhappy? They were all worried about how she felt about being granted the title of princess. Didn't they ask for the seal? Jing Jingyu silently touched her forehead and shook her head, saying, No, my brothers are very happy. How could he, who is in charge of the classics, not understand the intentions of Emperor Daliang? They thought that the title of Jiao Jiao would be supreme honor, but they also did not think that it would be the title of Xiang or the head of the various princesses. In addition, with Feng Yu and Jin Buyao, as well as a princess like Salary, they couldn't understand the emperor's intentions too well. He was inspired by the idea of appointing Beihang as the crown prince and then appointing Jiao Jiao as the crown princess, in order to stabilize Beihang's position with the influence of the Wind family. They don't want their sister to get involved in the vortex of power. Feng Jiao Jiao, who didn't understand the ancient system, also vaguely sensed something, but due to her childhood identity, she didn't ask much. Feng Feiyan had a refined and despicable face, bent down to pick up Feng Jiao Jiao, and said with a sinister smile, Let's go, second brother will take you to dinner. Third brother, 
Please send Seventh Brothers things over. Okay. Feng Jiao Jiao pricked a small knot on each side, holding Feng Feian's neck and asking, Brother, who is Seventh Brother? Why haven't I seen him? End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Time is tight and tasks are heavy. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Time is tight and tasks are heavy. Feng Feian nodded at her nose and squinted her eyes, saying, It's Feng Chu Xiao, the brother who came back with you. In the future, anyone who asks you should remember that he's the little brother who came back with you. He's still sick, and you'll see him in a few days. Feng Jiao Jiao is not a real child, how can she really let nature take its course? Besides, she has to earn merits and continue her life, and she also has to follow her destiny to marry into the imperial family and become an empress. In ancient times, when getting married, she was young, time was tight, and tasks were heavy. It was still necessary for her to learn more about the ups and downs in the palace. It was night, cool as water, and another wave of heavy snow fell. Feng Jiao Jiao took advantage of her brother's leaving and tiptoed to open the bed tent, put on a cloak, and walked out of the Baoyue pavilion. She held a Persian cat snowball in her arms and crunched out snow nests under her feet. She said to the insect in her hand, Go ahead, bring the snowball inside. She wanted to see which side of the divine Buddha the seventh brother who lived inside was. The little goo insect was buzzing on the back of her hand, as if saying something. She raised her eyebrows and said, Are you saying that he also has goo insects in his hand? Is this game wholesale? No way. Isn't it precious that only the royal family in southern Xinjiang can have it? The Feng family only has her and the prime minister each, how could this young man also have one in his hands? She couldn't help but become more curious about the identity of the people inside. She tiptoed inside and a snowball hit her feet, stopping her pace and saying, what kind of person? A ghostly figure appeared in front of her in an instant, with a sharp sword pointed straight at her throat. She paused for a few seconds before suddenly seeing a seven or eight year old boy sitting under a tree in the courtyard. This young man is extremely thin, with Persian fox fur draped over him, and a pale yellow python robe stained with blood and dust. His attire and hair are a bit messy. He sat there with his eyes slightly lowered, silent, as if everything outside had nothing to do with him. For example, wild dogs lose their homes, jackals and wolves end up in dire straits, walking corpses and flesh are all things that can be likened. And that face was surprisingly beautiful. With just one glance at the corner of the eyebrow, it is like a goo-capturing soul. It's hard to imagine how handsome and unparalleled he would be if he were to grow up. However, the young man's eyes were empty and lifeless, with no trace of liveliness, and he didn't know what he had experienced. Fong Zeo was completely lifeless. He is from the royal family of Daliang. Is it the crown prince? Fong Jiao Jiao was stunned for a moment, and a stream of light flashed through her eyes. In the next second, she sat down without leaving a trace, collecting the insect and crying loudly while holding the Persian cat. Her face was snow.white and cute, like a fairy doll. Her facial features were delicate, and her tears were big, falling one by one, tugging at her heart. Feng Chu looked back slightly at the young girl and only looked at her before getting up. He raised his hand to signal the sword-wielding boy to stop and came to her, saying, Don't cry, it's very cold in the snow. Let the tree shadow take you back. He has a gentle voice and is humble like a gentleman. His eyes are gentle and peaceful, but it seems like he is hiding a black abyss, unable to see it all at once. The stillness and gentleness accentuated his blood color. The young man in black walked towards Feng Jiao Jiao, who stopped crying. However, tears still fell big and big. Seeing the young man in black approaching, she visibly shrank. The tree shadow stopped and drew back the long sword. Feng Chu Xiao turned around and was about to leave. Feng Jiao Jiao shouted, Little brother. Feng Chu's sails stopped, 
and Feng Jiaojiao struggled to stand up. She approached the young man step by step, and a cluster of eyebrows could hardly be seen. The next second, she saw Feng Jiaojiao deliver the Persian cat from her arms to the young man's embrace. She showed a pure smile and her voice was soft. Little brother, this is for you. Feng Chuxiao seemed to want to refuse, but Feng Jiaojiao said again, Brother said you have just returned home and suffered a lot of injuries. Jiao Jiao has just arrived here and is also in pain and fear, but she is not afraid of having snowballs with her, so little brother needs to get better soon. Then he ran away without a trace. Feng Chuxiao held the cat in his arms and watched her leaving in a daze. He lowered his eyes slightly, looked at the cat in his arms, turned around and carried it back to the room. Soon, his voice came from the room. Tree shadow, prepare for bathing, healing, and preparing meals. An unbelievable surprise burst into the eyes of Xu Aying, and he quickly said, yes, and prepared to go. These days, Feng Chuxiao simply bandaged the wound and didn't allow anyone to approach, nor did he drink or eat. Finally, he wanted to open it up. Feng Jiaojiao, who had returned to the Baoyue Pavilion, couldn't help but take a deep breath. Oh my goodness, the crown prince is still injured in their mansion like this. I heard from my father and brothers that something big happened in the palace, but I don't know what it was. Mrs. Zheng told her maiden Xiao that the old emperor had plans for the crown prince to marry her as the crown princess. I'm afraid the crown prince who was engaged to him before will be deposed, and the Xiao lady who is engaged to him will also be neglected. And she is the only suitable candidate to build momentum for the new heir. No wonder she was conferred the title of Princess Xiang, the leader of all the princesses. No wonder she was given so many things, and no wonder her brothers were unhappy. It turned out that she was being used as a pawn. Unexpectedly, the bloody scenes in the palace were so cruel that even the crown prince could have been seriously injured. Fortunately, the empress is still the wife who fights the world with the emperor. The man is so ruthless. Feng Jiaojiao couldn't help but start analyzing the pros and cons. She needs to come up with a good solution, find good candidates, and never trust emotions and temporary power, so as not to be eaten by the jackals and wolves in the palace and have no bones left. She remained silent for a while, and finally her eyes lifted. Does the Prime Minister's father's choice to help the Crown Prince escape indicate that he will share the risk and honor with the Crown Prince? Moreover, with the presence of Gu Bu and protective forces on the Crown Prince, it seems that it is not impossible for him to overturn the situation. She just insists on becoming the Queen, and this Crown Prince has an engagement with her, I don't know what the new Crown Prince will do. It seems that she needs to inquire about the new Crown Prince carefully. The saying goes that emotions should be slowly cultivated, and the future path should also be paved in advance. The next day, before Feng Jiaojiao could inquire about the news of the new crown prince, he saw the prime minister's father come in and picked her up, saying, Jiaojiao, there is a distinguished guest at home today. Let's take Jiaojiao to change her clothes. His eyes were filled with worry, needless to say, she knew who to see. Anxiao responded and made her look quite gorgeous and beautiful, which complimented her snow-white face and made her even more lovable. And Xiao sincerely praised, the princess is naturally beautiful, and even a little bit of dressing up makes her look stunning. Not to mention the guests, I can't even take my eyes off them. She also saw who the person was. Feng Jiaojiao looked at her with a gentle smile, got up and walked out of the boudoir, but her small hand, shrouded in her sleeve, called out the Gu Bu Bu, appearing calm on the surface. Bei Heng came here to consider whether his future crown princess is qualified, but if she wants to become her crown prince, she also needs to see if he is qualified enough. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Mutations You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Mutations the banquet for the crown prince was held at the Yuhua Terrace on the Lotus Pond. Yuhua Terrace is surrounded by water on all sides, and beneath it are layers of lotus leaves covering it. Although it is winter, here it is as strange as spring and summer. 
Lotus flowers may be in full bloom or in bud, with roots interwoven between them. Occasionally, a gentle breeze strikes, creating a beautiful and swaying appearance. The Yuhua Terrace is made of glass, and the sunlight shines on it, making it colorful. However, it doesn't feel dazzling because of the blue silk curtains. The attendants orderly brought out different fruits and delicacies, while the guards dressed in silver armor stood solemnly on both sides. Noble officials and dignitaries continue to arrive, and many children around the age of the crown prince appear here dressed in exquisite attire. It goes without saying that many of these people have received news that Crown Prince Hang is coming to choose Feng Jiaojiao as the crown princess. They all hope that Crown Prince Hang can not only choose the crown princess, but also secure a good position for their own daughter. Among them, Han Xiangyue, the only daughter of the Minister of Revenue, Mu Yuan, the legitimate daughter of Mu Zhongshu, and Xiao Zan, the eldest daughter of Xiao Taiwei, were particularly prominent. They not only dress up beautifully and cutely, but their influence behind them cannot be underestimated. However, one of them had an awkward identity, which was Xiao Zanlang, the eldest daughter of Captain Xiao. It is said that she had previously arranged a doll marriage with Beijing, but now Beijing has been deposed and her whereabouts are unknown. Fortunately, they have not had any tokens before, so the Xiao family decided to treat it as a joke and bring Xiao Zanlang to this situation. Feng Jiaojiao calmly glanced at Feng Chushao following behind Prime Minister Feng, only to see him dressed in plain white moonlight brocade, with a silver mask on his face, citing his injured face as evil, and lowered his eyes, unable to show any emotions. Twenty or so tables were filled with people, and the main seat was occupied by the newly appointed Crown Prince Beihang. Beihang was only five years old, and beside him sat Prince and Li Yuan, while Prime Minister Feng bowed with the seven sons of the Feng family and Feng Jiaojiao. I have seen His Highness the Crown Prince. And Li Yuan and Bei Heng whispered a few words in their ears, and the little prince then raised his right hand in confusion. His voice was tender and slightly trembling, saying, Get up. Prime Minister Feng and Feng Jiaojiao just got up. The Crown Prince whispered in Bei Heng's ear, constantly talking about the precautions to be taken as the crown prince and what he wanted to say in order to determine the candidate for the crown princess. The child sat there bewildered and timid, staring straight at the direction of his future crown princess. Feng Jiaojiao's scalp tightened as he looked at her. Suddenly, the insect in her sleeve moved, and she seemed to realize something. She pressed down on the insect that was about to move, and the next second she saw a man dressed as a servant. She threw away the tray in her hand, took out a dagger, and headed straight towards Feng Jiaojiao, shouting, Go to hell! Sitting behind him, Feng Chu's eyes flickered, but he then held back. Because the Prime Minister Feng sitting next to Feng Jiaojiao had already taken action, he used himself to protect her and shouted, Protect the Crown Prince! Then he kicked away the assassin. The guard guarding the side quickly subdued the criminal, but when they looked up, they found that the person was Tu Badeo, who was supposed to be detained in the firewood room. At this moment, his face was already covered in blood and injuries, and he was pressed there with a fierce expression. He shouted to the young crown prince in charge, Crown Prince, help me, Crown Prince Mingjian. Prime Minister Feng snatched away the young daughter of the grassroots and wanted to kill the grassroots couple. Please uphold justice. As soon as these words were spoken, a servant dressed as a nanny knelt down in front of the crown prince, looked up, and it was Zhao Guilan. Zhao Guilan was also covered in wounds all over her head and face, covered in blood. She trembled and shed tears, saying, Prime Minister Feng has taken the daughter of a commoner's wife, and he also wants to kill the commoner couple. I beg His Highness the crown prince to uphold justice. She was pinned to the ground by the sharp-eyed and agile guards, but kept crying and shouting, crawling straight towards the direction of the little prince. The little prince had never seen such a battle before, and from his perspective, he seemed to have seen the evil spirit of Sadako, which scared her pale face. Feng Jiaojiao's eyes, buried in Prime Minister Feng's arms, flashed a hint of darkness. Prime Minister Feng said, hurry up and throw these two lunatics out. 
he stood up again and said to the young crown prince, these two people kidnapped my daughter and didn't want to die. I don't know how they managed to escape from the woodshed and disturb his highness. I hope his highness will forgive me. The scenic area was about to pull the two of them away with the guards. The minister of revenue, Han Zheng, stood up and said, wait a minute. Then he arched his hand at the young crown prince who was about to cry. Your Highness, the legitimate daughter of the Fong family has returned and there is something suspicious, and these two people don't seem to be lying. Now that these two have been brought to justice in front of Your Highness, as Your Highness, I think it is appropriate to interrogate them. He reached out and stopped Tu Badeo and the other two who were about to be taken away by the guards. Tu Badeo and his companions quickly cowed out to the crown prince sitting in the upper position and said, Yes, Your Highness. The grassroots people are unjustly accused. I beg your highness to make decisions for the grassroots people. Prime Minister Feng hugged the frightened Feng Jiaojiao in his arms and spoke ill to the Minister of Revenue, saying, Are you saying that the Prime Minister is lying? The Minister of Revenue was not afraid either. Instead, he looked directly at Feng Zilin and asked, How could the Prime Minister explain that even though he had found a son and a daughter, this couple only claimed that the Prime Minister had taken their daughter. If they really wanted to frame a crime, why not just say that the Prime Minister had taken their son and a daughter? As he spoke, the Minister of Revenue's gaze crossed over the Prime Minister and pointed directly at the young man sitting in the back seat wearing a mask. Everyone present followed his gaze, and among them were some ministers who had seen Bei Jining, their eyes fixed on him. This figure is just like the missing prince. The young man sat silently, as if he had not seen the dispute here, nor was he frightened by it. He looked indifferent, and when everyone pulled the flames of war onto him, the young man lifted his eyes and stood up, bowing slightly to the crown prince without explaining anything. And Li Yuan's eyes flickered slightly as he sat beside the young prince. Tu Ba Dao wished he could chew Feng Jiaojiao into pieces and swallow her stomach. Why are they so embarrassed and miserable, but this little bastard is dressed in gorgeous clothes and so comfortable? A wave of resentment and injustice filled his brain. Feng Jiaojiao seemed to be frightened by their malicious eyes and trembled, then burst into tears. While crying, she grabbed Prime Minister Feng's sleeve and said, Daddy, help me. They're going to kill me. Zhao Guilan cried to Feng Jiaojiao, It's hard to conceive for my mother in October. I almost lost half of my life when I gave birth to you. Although my family is poor, everything good is tight to you first. You can't climb the high branch, so don't kiss your father and mother. She cried bitterly, and the people present couldn't help but say, poor parents in the world. If this were really true, it would be too much. The speaker's voice paused, looking at Prime Minister Feng's face and not daring to say more. Some people also feel that it's not right. No parent would be afraid that their child's future is too good, they are lying, right? Yeah, and this man was going to assassinate the little princess at first. How could any parents be so cruel? End of this chapter Chapter 7 Identity Doubts You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Identity Doubts Zhao Guilan said, the commoner did not lie. That little girl has a butterfly-shaped birthmark on the back of her neck, which is the imprint of the commoner's daughter. Please. Prime Minister Feng kicked her with all his heart and kicked her several times, saying, you dare to talk here even after robbing my child. Someone, send them to jail. As the scenic area approached, he was about to pull someone off. The Minister of Revenue stopped him again and sneered, why, Prime Minister Feng can't help but kill someone and silence him. Feng Zilin was not afraid and looked straight into his eyes, saying, what benefits does it have for me to pretend to be my daughter? Of course, becoming the Crown Princess is a great benefit. Woo woo. Feng Jiaojiao cried even louder, and Prime Minister Feng glared angrily at the Minister of Revenue, taking a step back in fear. The six sons of the Feng family gathered around, calmly blocking between Feng Jiaojiao and the Minister of Revenue. Prime Minister Feng comforted her and said, 
Jiao Jiao is not afraid, my father is here. The scene was already somewhat frightening, and with more young girls coming today, Han Xianyue, who was closest to Feng Jiao Jiao, couldn't help but cry. The Minister of Revenue's gaze immediately silenced Xiao Xianyue's crying, and she just lowered her eyes and sobbed there, feeling so pitiful. Now, all the children were infected by Feng Jiao Jiao's crying, except for Xiao Zan, the daughter of Captain Xiao, who coldly pinched her handkerchief, pursed her lips, and lowered her head while sitting there, trying not to cry. Even the young crown prince sitting in the main seat couldn't help but cry. He tightened in Liyuan's sleeve and tearfully said, Master, I'm afraid. I want to go back. Finding a wife is too scary. And Liyuan held down his hand and said, Prince, when Mount Taishan collapsed in front of us, his face will not change. He glanced at the boy standing quietly at the corner of his eyes. At the moment, he was also looking at him with his eyes light, and a smile that was not easy to be found was raised from the corner of his lips. The Minister of Revenue stopped the scenic area and said to the crowd, There is doubt about the identity of the legitimate young lady of the Fong family. The crown prince's status is valuable, and before the people cry out against you, today the nobles are here. We must talk in detail about black and white. Other families who have coveted the position of crown princess have also shouted, yes, the crown prince's status is precious, and one cannot match someone with an unknown origin at will. But most of the ministers who were afraid of the Fong clan's rebellion remained silent and watched from the shore. At this moment, a calm and dignified female voice suddenly sounded outside the door. If you want to compete for the position of crown princess of my granddaughter, just speak up as the minister of revenue. There is no need to falsely accuse my delicate family. Opening the veil, it was Mrs. Zheng who entered. She held a cane in her hand and was particularly majestic. Everyone present, except for those of second or higher rank, stood up to salute and asked, Madam. She then sat down. The Minister of Revenue was a bit uncertain in his heart. He was already very nervous about the Shangfeng family, and now, with the addition of the Zheng family, he was even more frightened. Did he really overthink the matter? This little girl is really the daughter of Feng Zilin and Zheng Wainer. Why hasn't Zheng Wanner come back? Mr. Zheng first came to the little prince to salute and greet him. When he heard the prince's tone of not wanting to cry, he came to Prime Minister Feng and took away Feng Jiao Jiao in his arms to comfort him. Feng Jiao Jiao hugged her neck and wept, Grandmother, they. Wu Wu. They want to hit Jiao Jiao again. Feng Jiao Jiao pointed at the two people and accused them, portraying a pitiful image to the fullest. People present, especially those with daughters, are all anxious in their hearts. Leaving aside whether these two are actually the biological parents of this girl, over the years, Feng Jiao Jiao has definitely not been taken care of as well as these two people say. Beijing couldn't help but glance sideways, looking at the tears on Feng Jiao Jiao's face, as if a hint of emotion flashed through her eyes. The Minister of Revenue said, Madam Zheng, be well. I am just afraid of admitting my mistake. As long as I can prove the bloodline of the young lady and the seventh prince, I have no further questions. Madame Zheng said coldly, the Minister of Revenue has put in a lot of effort. The Minister of Revenue also sneered, after all, Princess Jiao Jiao is someone who wants to become a crown princess. I dare not neglect my duties. Tu Badeo and Zhao Guilan, who were pressed aside, were also struggling frantically. Your Highness, this is the youngest daughter of the villain. She is not even the daughter of Prime Minister Fong. The villain dare not defile the crown prince with his impure bloodline. Dear Master Qing Tian, please make the decision for me and my wife. That's the meat that fell from my October pregnancy. How can someone take it away? Zhao Guilan cried bitterly, and everyone present looked at each other. Finally, one person shouted, just let the seventh young master take off his mask, and let the princess and seventh young master both drip blood and recognize the prime minister as relatives. We are all witnesses. Yes, prime minister. The face of the Fong family looked a bit ugly, 
and Prime Minister Fong said, what's the point of this? Everyone would say that my delicate and seventh son's bloodline has been suspected, and the Prime Minister would not agree. Someone will send the Minister of Household and send these people to prison. The Minister of Revenue refused to give up, and Tubadeo and his companions knelt down and howled. Everyone present could smell something unusual. Han Zheng said coldly, Prime Minister, are you feeling guilty? As soon as the words fell, Feng Jiaojiao spat out a mouthful of blood. In an instant, her face was like white paper, and her lips were pale, which startled Madame Zheng, Prime Minister Feng, and everyone else. Even Han Zheng was stunned by this incident. Before Prime Minister Feng could shout out, Xian Tai is here, he saw a goo insect the size of a grain of rice crawling out of Feng Jiaojiao's sleeve, climbing onto the back of his hand, and flying directly towards Han Zheng. Han Zheng's eyes were instantly burned, and he let out a scream of agony. Blood flowed from his eyes, and he didn't care about his image rolling there. Tu Badeo and his companions had suffered losses from Gubu, and when they saw Gubu, they were naturally frightened. The two of them widened their eyes and frantically dodged backwards, but unfortunately, they were held back by the guards. Han Xiangyue, who came together, was also scared and confused. She was still young, but when she saw her father injured, she ran over and cried, asking, Dad, what's wrong with you? Is there anything wrong? However, Prime Minister Feng used his own Gu Bu to detoxify Feng Jiaojiao and showed them to everyone. As we all know, Gu Bu only stays on the owner or the owner's child. If they are poisoned by Gu Bu, only their spouse can resolve it. The Gu Bu on Jiao Jiao is my wife's property, and poisoning can also be resolved with my Gu Bu. Therefore, there is no doubt that Jiao Jiao's identity is the daughter of Feng Zilin. Then he made a gesture and let the insect on Han Zheng's body return to Feng Jiao Jiao's hands. Han Zheng stood up in embarrassment and Feng Zilin said, Han Shirlang, can you distinguish now? The two of Tu Badeo knelt on the ground trembling and everyone could confirm Feng Jiao Jiao's identity by seeing the behavior of Gu Bu, Han Zheng wiped his face fiercely with his sleeve and pointed fiercely at Feng Chu behind Prime Minister Feng, saying. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Pushing the Boat Along the Current You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio Chapter 8 Pushing the Boat Along the Current The identity of the princess can be determined, but what about him? Don't the ministers feel that his figure is extremely similar to that of an old friend? Seeing the crown prince wearing a mask in person, is it for a reason or is it a guilty conscience? Prime Minister Feng wished he could release the insect in his hand again, and everyone's eyes returned to Feng Chuxiao's body, their eyes dim. Just as Mrs. Zheng and Prime Minister Feng were about to say something more, Feng Chuxiao suddenly walked up to the young crown prince. Everyone held their voices, but Feng Chuxiao took off his mask in front of everyone's attention. Prime Minister Feng's expression froze for a moment, only to see him turn towards everyone. A face covered in scars and somewhat similar in appearance to Feng Jiaojiao suddenly appeared in front of everyone. The children who had just been stopped from crying by their parents began to cry again, except for a hint of playfulness in Feng Jiaojiao's eyes, who also cried and fell into Mrs. Zheng's arms. The young crown prince was scared to death. Han Zheng was a bit incredulous, his expression was cracking. Feng Chuxiao turned back to the young crown prince and bowed slightly. His voice was a bit hoarse. Your Highness, the commoner has an ugly face and is afraid of disturbing the crown prince. Therefore, wearing a mask is really impolite. I hope your Highness can make amends. The little crown prince was so scared that Baozi's face twisted, tears and nose streaming down his face. However, he still remembered and Liyuan's words and tightly grabbed and Liyuan's sleeve, trembling and saying, It's okay, just put on the mask. And Liyuan wiped his face. Feng Chu calmly put on a mask. Han Zheng's hands and feet were cold, and then he heard Feng Jiao Jiao cry, Brother, I'm afraid. The little girl opened her arms to him, and Feng Chu was taken aback. His eyes moved slightly, 
and he quickly took her from Mrs. Zhang's arms. She hugged his neck and cried, Brother, they're going to beat Jiao Jiao again. Jiao Jiao is so scared, sobbing. Feng Chuxiao's eyes were slightly lowered, and there seemed to be a trace inside. His gaze turned to the two kneeling people, and the corner of his lips hooked. No, they don't have this chance anymore. The next second, those two people suddenly trembled, their faces turned black, their eyes rolled over, and they fainted. Everyone was greatly frightened. Feng Chuxiao held on to Feng Jiao Jiao and asked the frightened little prince, Your Highness, are you here today to choose the crown princess? The young crown prince nodded blankly, met his eyes, and then shook his head. I didn't, I didn't. He didn't say it well and had no confidence, but his sleeve was pulled by an Liyuan beside him. Bei Heng shrunk his mouth and nodded again, choose. He looked at Feng Chuxiao, feeling bewildered and panicked. He used all his strength to stop crying and cautiously said to an Liyuan beside him, Master, can I not want her? Her brother is too scary. Woo woo. An Liyuan frowned slightly and comforted in a low voice, Your Highness, you cannot be willful. However, Bei Heng looked at the little girl standing next to Han Zheng, who was obedient and clever, looking even less daring than him. He raised his tender little hand and pointed at Han Xiangyue, saying, Can I choose her to be my crown princess? As soon as these words were spoken, the whole room suddenly became much quieter. Han Zheng quickly arched his hand to Bei Heng and said, Your Highness, the humble appearance of a young woman is not enough to be a righteous person. Before he could finish a sentence, Prime Minister Feng interrupted directly, My family is still young and delicate. Coupled with how much trouble the eunuch has taken, my family's eunuch and eunuch will no longer consider marriage. Please rest assured, eunuch. Moreover, the crown prince already has a desired candidate. As the nobles testify, let's congratulate Mr. Han first. Half of the sarcastic remarks, half of the smooth sailing, seemed to slap Han Jiang dozens of times, making his face turn red and preserving Feng Jiao Jiao's peace for several years. Before Han Jiang could react, Prime Minister Feng continued, Jing Yu, pass on the order. Today, Han Shirlang disturbed my daughter to attend a banquet. In the future, no banquet will be held by our Feng clan. Han Shirlang, please go back. He actually issued an order to expel guests. Han Zhang suddenly felt five thunderbolts thundering. He originally intended to drag the Feng family into the water, even if it ruined the marriage between the crown prince and the Feng family, he would still have the upper hand in the matter, and then become a concubine for his own daughter. Unexpectedly, it turned out to be a false accusation against the Feng family, as their daughter was unjustly in power. The children are young and don't think much of it, but even adults with a bit of success in their hearts can see that their daughter's background is too low to hold the position of crown princess. Today, the young crown prince has made an appointment, and when the emperor of Liang finds out, he will definitely erase the engagement. By then, he not only angered the Feng family, but also caused dissatisfaction from the Emperor of Liang. Han Zheng seemed to be trying to make up for something, but the scenic area didn't give him this opportunity at all. He raised his hand and made a gesture of invitation to Han Zheng, saying, Han, please. Han Zheng's face suddenly turned as if it were a pig's liver. He clenched his fist in his sleeve and couldn't hold his face. He could only grit his teeth and snort coldly, goodbye. No delivery. Prime Minister Feng said coldly. Han Zheng, with a green face, pulled up Han Xiangyue and was about to leave. However, everyone in the room was just waiting for him to leave with cold eyes, but there was no intention of giving him a gift. This was truly the most shameful loss he had ever made since becoming an official. But unfortunately, at this moment, Mrs. Zheng was still in the back, not too tight or too slow, saying, from now on, the Han family doesn't need to visit my Jing family's door. Tomorrow, my old bone will be enshrined in the palace face saint. Let's talk about today's events in detail. The veins on his forehead twitched and twitched, his eyes gleamed cold, and he paused to glance at the people present. Their gaze at him was somewhat subtle. 
He took a deep breath and continued walking outside, listening to Prime Minister Feng's deep command from behind. Send someone to investigate how these two things crawled out. If there is anything inside or outside the mansion that is being eaten, kill it all together and report it to the emperor tomorrow. Han Zhang's eyes turned black for a moment, his throat choked with blood, and a mouthful of fishy sweetness surged up. However, when he walked to the door, he didn't hold on and spewed out a mouthful of blood, falling under the carriage. Han Xiangyue, who came with her, was quite frightened. In the end, the sedan chair driver brought him onto the sedan chair and hurriedly carried him back all the way. The so dot called harm to others ultimately harms oneself is just right. There was a hint of mockery on Feng Jiao Jiao's lips, and since she had achieved her goal, she was too lazy to move any further. Instead, she put an innocent baby in Feng Chu Xiao's arms. A gentle voice came from above. Do you want to continue eating here or go back and rest? Feng Jiao Jiao looked up and was staring at Feng Chu Xiao with a pair of sparkling eyes, staring at her at the moment. There seemed to be a hint of exploration in the depths of his eyes. Feng Jiao Jiao was slightly startled. Did he see something? She remained expressionless on the surface, still childish and innocent, blinking innocently as if she didn't understand what he was saying. She pointed to the Rui cake in front of the table and said, Brother, Jiao Jiao wants to eat this. Feng Chu's lips curled and he spoke slowly in a low voice, My sister has seen me before, and it's rare that I didn't cry today. He then looked at the insect on her sleeve and said, This little thing has always been obedient, but there are also times when it comes to acting on its own. My sister doesn't want to be the crown princess, so the result should be as expected. As he spoke, he handed her the Rui cake in his hand. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Merit, isn't it here? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Merit, isn't it here? Feng Jiao Jiao let out a low curse from the bottom of her heart, but on the surface, she didn't seem to understand. She only focused on the Rui cake he handed over and bit it into her mouth with a sweet smile. If that little crown prince who cries in fear can do this fox spirit, then hell. Sure enough, the average person who walked out of the palace had 800 cunning thoughts. She thought she was doing it perfectly, but she still showed him his tricks. It seems that she needs to be more careful. With this lesson, Feng Jiao Jiao is more cautious about entering the palace in the future. After packing a good baby in Feng Chu Xiao's arms for a while, she fled the crematorium under the pretext of going to the backyard to watch a play. There are two entrances in the backyard, one leading to their residence and the other to the stage garden where guests are entertained. Feng Jiao Jiao was held in and Xiao's arms and walked towards the stage garden, but before they could reach, she heard a sharp girl scolding and saying, Dog servant, dare to pour alcohol on me. Dream butterfly will kill him for me. The eunuch quickly knelt down and begged for mercy, Please spare your life, princess. I am the little virtuous son next to the crown prince. I was in a hurry and ran into a nobleman. I begged the princess to spare my life, and no other punishment will do. I kowtow to the lord's kindness. The little eunuch was so frightened that his words were trembling. Feng Jiao Jiao couldn't help but raise her eyebrows. Who is so reckless? How dare the crown prince provoke the prime minister's banquet and kill those around him before he leaves? Princess! What kind of arrogant cargo is it that can't be picked up clearly? Is it not enough for a Han Shirlang to be an example? An Xiao, adhering to the principle of less is better than more, wanted to take Feng Jiao Jiao on a detour. However, Feng Jiao Jiao raised her small hand and pointed to the road over there, saying, Sister An Xiao, who is that over there? She seemed to be attracted by the excitement like a child. An Xiao gathered up the fox cloak on her body and coaxed, No one, I'll take you over there. That was not a lively scene to join in. Feng Jiao Jiao portrayed the child's stubbornness to the fullest. No, I just want to go that way. And Xiao cannot resist the will of the master, so he can only grit his teeth and walk towards the center of right and wrong. 
Behind the silver-clad branches, there was a young girl dressed in a coat of goose feathers and feathers, who angrily scolded the eunuch kneeling in front of her. Feng Jiaojiao recognized her at a glance as Mu Yuan, the legitimate daughter of Mu Zhongshu Ling. They had just met at a banquet. There was a wine stain on the corner of Mu Yuan's robe, and behind her stood an older maid who was accompanying her with a stern expression, dissuading her, Princess, after all, he is a person of the crown prince. Will he? The stubborn little child who grew up couldn't listen. She stomped her foot in anger and said, I don't care. This princess will let you kill him. You go quickly. Look, isn't Merit here? The appearance of Feng Jiaojiao and An Xiao shifted their gaze. Mu Yuan was caught throwing a tantrum, feeling a bit embarrassed and angry for a moment. However, because she was a child who couldn't hide her emotions, she glared at Feng Jiaojiao. Seeing her staring at her intently, with a slightly stunned expression, Mu Yuan became even more angry and said, What are you looking at? Due to the cold weather, the cold wind gave her a shiver, and coupled with Xiao Doubting's height, she saw that the Feng Jiaojiao in An Xiao's arms had lost most of her momentum. Feng Jiaojiao nestled in An Xiao's arms, and An Xiao and the maid behind her bowed to each other's master. The eunuch greeted Feng Jiaojiao and said, Have you seen Princess Xiang? Mu Yuan only then remembered the title of Feng Jiaojiao, who was the head of the various princesses. Normally, she should have bowed to Feng Jiaojiao halfway. However, at this moment, Mu Yuan was a bit angry, and coupled with his original dissatisfaction with her as the head of the various princesses, his face still held on arrogance and did not bow. The little maid beside her pulled at her and said, Princess, you. Are you the Princess Shueyue? Feng Jiaojiao spoke softly, her innocent voice still carrying a hint of stinginess, cute and heartwarming. Not bad. Mu Yuan was as proud as a peacock, but there was still a soft spot in his heart that she poked, and his anger suddenly vented. Feng Jiaojiao tilted her head, and the two little chirps on her head were as cute as her ears. She said in a daze, little sister, how beautiful you are. Her eyes were pure and clear, and her expression was not at all artificial. In addition, her childhood identity added a touch of authenticity and frankness to her words, unlike adult flattery, and Mu Yuan's anger instantly dissipated. How could this make her difficult? She felt a little self-conscious and cleared her voice, saying, The bishop of this county is training a servant. Do you have anything else to do? Stay here and watch. Feng Jiaojiao patted An Xiao and gestured for her to put herself down. Little sister, what's wrong with you? Did you argue? Can you tell me? Her voice was soft and sticky, and her small steps ran all the way to Mu Yuan. The two little chirps on her head were so cute, jumping and jumping. An Xiao's heart couldn't help but rise, and she immediately followed, afraid that her own master would suffer losses. This Princess Shueyue is notorious for being stubborn and stubborn. Mu Yuan, however, felt that she was a bit foolish and adorable. She couldn't help but let go of her guard and pouted at her, saying, This servant has dirted my clothes. I have to go to the back hall to watch a play later. How can I get there? She kicked the little eunuch in the snow with hatred. Feng Jiaojiao tilted her head to look at the dirt on her skirt, then looked at her again, blinking and blinking, as if she understood. She pouted and snorted at the eunuch, It's all up to you. You've dirted your pretty sister's clothes. The little eunuch was originally afraid, but now with the addition of a charming and charming character, the newly appointed Princess Xiang by Emperor Daliang made the little eunuch even more afraid. He knelt down on the other end and couldn't even lift himself. He trembled and said, Please spare your life, two princesses. Zayadizi knew he was wrong, and Zayadizi accepted the punishment. He only begged the two masters to spare my life, and I count out to the two masters for their great kindness. Xiao Detsi knelt on the ground and count out incessantly, but soon his head was bleeding. Mu Yuan was already accustomed to it. She snorted coldly and was about to issue a killing order, but when Feng Jiaojiao grabbed a handful of snow and directly smashed it at the eunuch, 
she said fiercely, I'll shit you. Xiao Detsi was stopped by a face of snow, and just as he was about to kowtow again, he saw Feng Jiao Jiao standing in front of him with her waist pinched, making it impossible for him to kowtow for the time being. Feng Jiao Jiao said, Are you bullying a beautiful sister? Mu Yuan gave a hard nod, indicating that she was very useful and felt like finding her little sisters. Xiao Detsi was so scared that tears were almost streaming down his face that he could only explain clumsily, I'm not a servant. Feng Jiao Jiao interrupted, You said she hit you twice, such a beautiful little sister. Mu Yuan took a few steps forward and was about to raise his hand, but heard Feng Jiao Jiao say, She can't do it. Have you ever seen a fairy hit someone? Mu Yuan nodded and silently put down his hand. I heard Feng Jiao Jiao say, Beautiful sister scold you a few words. You. She can't open her mouth. That's not something a fairy can do, it's damaging to her image. Mu Yuan. Yes. You can't curse people either. But it's really annoying to just spare you like this. Feng Jiao Jiao's eyes rolled and she turned back to Mu Yuan, holding on to the two little Jujias. End of this chapter. Why is there him everywhere in chapter 10? You are listening at novel full dot audio. Why is there him everywhere in chapter 10? Beautiful sister, why don't we punish him by kneeling here? This will punish him and not damage the image of beautiful sister. Xiao Detsi couldn't help but turn pale upon hearing this. This child is even more poisonous than Princess Shueyue. It's freezing in this day, kneeling here is almost like dying him. Mu Yuan's eyes lit up and he nodded, this is good. He was also distressed, but what should I do with my clothes? Feng Jiao Jiao tilted her head as if she didn't know what to do. She looked at An Xiao beside her for help. An Xiao bowed to Mu Yuan and said, If the princess doesn't mind, I'll take you to the guest room to change clothes. There are many clothes for the princess to choose from. Okay. Mu Yuan nodded, and the little dissatisfaction in his heart disappeared. Suddenly, Feng Jiao Jiao was more pleasing to the eye than anyone else. She picked up her hand and bounced off to change clothes. Xiao Detsi's heart was filled with sorrow. The sound of scattered footsteps and the piercing cold wind, just as he was about to feel like he had lost his life today, suddenly he was covered in a plush cloak. Zayadizi was surprised and looked up, facing a soft and tender little face. This person was the one who had just offered a plan to make him kneel down here, Feng Jiao Jiao. Feng Jiao Jiao tied a beautiful bow to his cloak and extended a small hand to him in a sweet voice, saying, Can you still get up? Do you need my help? Xiao Detsi instantly regained his senses, fearing that he might have heard the wrong thing. He trembled and said, Little. Little princess didn't mean to make me kneel. Ice and snow dyed his eyelashes white and Feng Jiao Jiao said softly, Jiao Jiao wanted to save the little brother, but Jiao Jiao didn't know what to do, so she coaxed the little sister away first. As he spoke, he reached out to pull him. Upon hearing this, Zayadizi couldn't hold back his tears anymore. Since he became a servant, no one has ever considered his life as a destiny. Even if he worked as an official by the Crown Prince's side, Crown Prince Hang was not a deterrent. He can't keep him at all. These little eunuchs can only be bullied by others. Feng Jiao Jiao's words full of kindness, as well as the little brother's words, made Xiao Detsi's tears flow incessantly, and his heart was both sour and warm. Xiao Detsi, thank you to the master for your great kindness. Xiao Detsi dared not let Feng Jiao Jiao help him. After kowtowing heavily to Feng Jiao Jiao for three times, his legs trembled, and he was worried that the cold on his body might touch her. He kept a three-step distance from Feng Jiao Jiao. Feng Jiao Jiao looked up at his doll face, looking at the wound on his forehead and said seriously, Little brother, go to the Baoyue Pavilion to treat the wound. Xiao Detsi looked at the girl in front of him and wrapped his cloak tightly. After pursing her lips and hesitating for a moment, she asked, Princess, don't you worry about being accused by Princess Shueyue of stealing and releasing a servant. Are you angry? Although, in terms of identity, 
Feng Jiao Jiao does have the courage to be fearless, it is somewhat unworthy to make enemies for him as a servant. Feng Jiao Jiao obediently replied, I'm afraid, but Big Brother always says that saving a person's life is better than building a level 7 slaughterhouse, so Jiao Jiao is not afraid. Feng Jiao Jiao happily waved her hand to Xiao Detsi and bounced towards the backstage. It's a floating slaughter. Xiao Detsi corrected his feelings and was inevitably moved by Feng Jiao Jiao's sincerity and kindness. From then on, Princess Xiang became the most sacred and inviolable secret in his heart. Listen, it's the sound of merit being credited. As Feng Jiao Jiao was excited and her body became noticeably relaxed and warm, she even managed to win over the eunuch next to Crown Prince Heng. Unexpectedly, she saw Feng Chu Xiao standing in the corridor, looking at her with a slight smile in her eyes. The smile on her face froze for an instant. But soon he regained his innocent and naive demeanor. How did little brother come? She bounced up to Feng Chu Xiao and asked. Isn't this guy socializing with the crown prince in the front hall? Why is your soul lingering here? Feng Jiao Jiao followed his angle and casually glanced in the direction of just now, her heart tightening. This guy wouldn't have followed out long ago. He has been watching the play here for quite some time, right? Feng Chu's thin lips curved slightly, and he caressed the lazy snowball in his arms. His voice was light and he said, the kitten is naughty, I'll come out and take a look. He rubbed the two pointed ears of the snowball and glanced at the two chirps on her head, asking, are you going to see a play, sister? Feng Jiao Jiao nodded and asked obediently and politely, are you going with me, little brother? Feng Chu Xiao nodded slightly and said, it's okay. He then released the snowball in his hand and let it jump onto the ground in confusion. He looked up at Feng Chu Xiao and meowed, as if he was puzzled why his owner suddenly threw it down. Feng Chu Xiao bent down and picked up Feng Jiao Jiao, walking towards the stage without looking back. Feng Jiao Jiao smirked and asked, Isn't brother here to find the cat? How can we just throw it away? Feng Chu's footsteps paused slightly and he couldn't tell his expression on a mask. However, his gaze turned to her, as if with a smile. Yes, look at how she plays tricks on people. The smile on Jiao Jiao's face stiffened, and she indeed saw it. What's even more terrifying is that her thoughtfulness was pierced by him at a glance. Feng Jiao Jiao felt a bone-chilling sensation. This person's mind was close to that of a demon, but at the age of seven or eight, she could think like this. Every step counts as ten thousand steps. If he grew up, if she chose him, and would be together every day in the future, she really couldn't control her vest. How should she choose between a fox on one side and a little pig on the other? She had a moment of confusion in her thoughts. As the saying goes, she is not afraid of opponents like gods or teammates like pigs. If she chooses the little prince, her opponents and teammates will be terrifying. Does she really want to choose this fox? Feng Jiao Jiao stole a glance at him, not to mention Fang Feng and Chu Xing were also looking at her. Their eyes met, and she was startled. She couldn't help but swallow her saliva and smiled as if she were dealing with it, then didn't open her eyes. Collaborating with him, she is afraid of being eaten to the point where there are no bones left. She looked again, not in a hurry to choose. Feng Jiao Jiao silently comforted her suddenly accelerating small heart. Passing through the long corridor and then bypassing a small garden, one can see an empty courtyard. There is no one in the courtyard, only a huge stage standing alone. Because it is winter, the vegetation in the courtyard is sparse, and only some potted plum blossoms are used as decorations. Therefore, People all watch the play in the floating life hall of the theater, taste tea, eat cakes, and steam for warmth. I heard that the largest theater troupe in Beijing has been invited to sing opera today, but I don't know which school or school it is. But it's probably not as exciting as the scenes she's preparing for next. Compared to the front hall, the Fuxing Hall is much more elegant, without the dazzling and gorgeous glass lamps, but it is also very low-dot-key and luxurious. 
The whole house is made of sandalwood, and whether it is the walls, tables, chairs, or stage utensils, they are all carved bit by bit from sandalwood. Every inch needs to exhaust all the painstaking efforts of highly skilled teachers, and true low-dot-key luxury has connotations. All the courtiers and their families were present, singing, The Peony Pavilion, on stage. The girl who played Du Lin Yang was an extremely beautiful one, and judging from her height ratio, she was probably less than ten years old, wearing thick-soled shoes. End of this chapter